Hi, my name is Jay McGavern, and today I'm going to talk about Zips. That's Z-Y-P-S, my game library for Ruby. It's designed to make it easy to create complex behaviors by piecing together actions and conditions. In the window back there, you can see several creatures bouncing around with behaviors applied to them. Some flee from the others, some chase the others, some just turn in circles. The screen capture program doesn't really do the frame rate justice, but you get the idea. Installing Zips is easy if you have Ruby Gems installed. Just go sudo gem install zips. Or in my case, since I'm on Windows, just gem install zips. If there are any dependencies, such as WX Ruby that it needs, it'll ask you to install them automatically. Just say yes when it prompts you. And once you're back to a prompt, you're ready to play with the library. It's hard to run a GUI and a debugger at the same time, so what we're going to do is start up an instance of Zips and then connect to it via DRuby from another Ruby interpreter. If you're not familiar with DRuby, it's a library that should come standard with Ruby. It allows you to make any Ruby object available over the network, and you can call any method on it. To get started, we're going to call up Interactive Ruby. We'll require Ruby gems, just in case it hasn't been already. In my case, it has, though. Normally, at this point, we would require zips, the main zip package, but since we're using DRuby, I'm going to require zip slash remote instead. That will load up DRuby plus all the other libraries we need for us. When you want to access a zips class, you type zips, double colon, and let's say environment, for example, normally. However, we're going to take a little shortcut and say include the zips module, and that'll make it so that we can type just environment all by itself and to access the environment class, for example. Okay, here's the DRuby URI we're going to connect to. This is on the local host. And we'll use the environment client module to set up a remote environment for us. We say environment equals environment client get environment and we'll give it the URI we stored and there's an environment object that we can now use like any other let's create one of those creatures we'll need an instance of the creature class creature equals creature class dot new we'll leave it empty for now Creatures have a location object associated with them. Creature.location equals a new instance of the location class. And we'll say an x of 200 and a y of 100. They have a vector. Creature.vector equals a new instance of the vector class. We'll, we'll give it a speed of 50 and an angle of 45 degrees. And creatures have a size. Creature.size equals 50 units. Let's add it to the environment you see in the window behind us. Environment.objects, which is a list of the game objects that are in the world, append creature. And there it is. creature is doing though is traveling dumbly along on the vector we originally gave them. So let's make things a little more interesting for the next one. We'll do that by applying a behavior object to it. We'll call it chase and we create a new instance of the behavior class for it. Again, we'll leave it empty at first. Behaviors have one or more actions associated with them. So we'll say chase.actions, which is a list of action objects, append approach action dot new and we'll give that a rate of 200 units per second and approach action moves the creature towards other objects in the environment we need a creature to apply the behavior to we'll take a shortcut and just copy our original creature we'll call this one a cat and we do so or, and we make it by creature dot copy we're going to make this an orange cat. Cat.color, and we're going to create a new color object. Color.new, 
the color constructor takes red, green, and blue values ranging from 0 through 1. So red 1, green 0 0.75, and blue 0. That turns out to be orange. We need to add the behavior to the cat, cat.behaviors, which is a list of behavior objects. We append chase to it. And then, as before, we add the creature to the environment. Environment dot objects append cat. And you'll notice he immediately starts chasing the creature we had before. Let's make a few more like that. Five times, we'll take a block, environment dot objects append cat dot copy. And there are our new cats. Notice that, like the original, they're all chasing the other creature because their behavior was copied as well. The creature isn't giving our cats much of a challenge, he's just sitting there taking it. So let's make one that's a little smarter. We'll create a new behavior and call this one run. Run equals behavior.new. And we'll add a different action to this one, a flea action. Run actions append flea action dot new 200 units per second now it would be silly to just run away all the time so we're going to apply a condition to this action a condition limits when the action takes place behaviors have a conditions attribute run dot conditions append proximity condition Dot new. And we'll say that it will run away when something is 200 units away from it. We'll create a mouse by copying our original creature again. Mouse creature.copy. We'll make the mouse a little smaller than the cats. Mouse.size equals 10. And we'll add the run behavior to it. And run. Let's put a few of them in there. Five times block environment dot objects append copies of the mouse. And there are our mice, all running away, but only when they get close. Let's mix it up a little and have a storm blow in. Environments can have environmental factors associated with them, so we'll add a new accelerator which will mimic wind. Wind equals accelerator dot new. An accelerator descends from the environmental factor class. Its constructor takes a vector, vector dot new, 200 units per second, blowing to the right. And we will add the wind to the environment's environmental factors. Environment dot environmental factors append wind. And whoosh, they all blow off to the side. That's all I have for today. If you'd like to know more about the library, be sure to visit the ZIPS website at http j.mcgavern.com slash zips. While you're there, be sure to visit the documentation link and read up on the API. That's ZIPS, and I'm Jay McGavern. Thank you for watching.